everyone. Welcome to District 105's In Conversation with Distinguished Toastmaster. Today we have a wonderful woman, a chartered accountant by qualification, public speaker by passion, and a professor by profession. She holds a PhD in finance and was the vice president of academic affairs at American College of Dubai until she decided to call it a day in September 2020. An ardent Toastmaster for the past 25 years, she believes that Toastmasters has helped break the shackles in her and made her a more erudite speaker. She has inspired many by teaching at university and as a guest speaker at various forums. She believes the foundation of any great nation and a great world lies in the hands of today's youth. As a Toastmaster in Dubai, she worked towards influencing the young lives by running youth leadership programs in various schools in Dubai. She believes in giving back to society by nourishing young minds, thus helping them become capable leaders of tomorrow. Have you ever wondered about the origin of Toastmasters in UAE? Look no further. This is the lady who has the answers to all your questions. Please help me welcome distinguished Toastmaster Malika Ramanathan. Welcome DTM Malika to an evening with District 105 in conversation with DTMs. How are you doing? Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm doing very well. And it's a great pleasure and honor to be part of this. And I hope that this will be a forum which will inspire many more people to come to Toastmasters and join it and make it a bigger movement. Pleasure and honor is all ours. And uh, let's begin with where it all started. You are celebrated and honored as one of the longest standing member of Toastmasters in UAE. Tell us about the origin of Toastmasters in UAE and how did your relationship with Toastmasters start? Now, my tryst with Toastmasters started on November 2, 1995 at the Alpha Time Training Center here in Dubai, where for the first time, I learned about what Toastmasters was about. Now, Ram, my husband, is a voracious reader, and he had read about Toastmasters many years ago. But when he learned that there was a gentleman coming from Abu Dhabi to tell us about what Toastmasters was all about, we decided to attend that session. And it was Mr. Vijay Manikot who had come from Abu Dhabi to talk to us about the Toastmasters. Now, Vijay has been a long-standing member of the Bahrain chapter, if I'm not mistaken. And then when he moved to Abu Dhabi, he started the first chapter in the UAE there. Six months later, we started the Dubai chapter. So I went in with a preconceived notion of it being an organization where you learn about the etiquettes of raising toasts for drinks or toasts with drinks. It was more for the novelty value than anything that took me there. Mm -hmm. But I was pleasantly surprised that it was to do with talking, which I really loved. <laughs> and to learn about it in a manner such that there is a greater impact on the listeners. Thus began my journey with Toastmasters. So Ram and I, with a few like-minded individuals, formed the first ever chapter in Dubai called the Dubai Toastmasters. That was chartered in April 1996. Though we had started meeting in November 1995, but we could charter the chapter, the club, only in April 1996. And do you know why that happened? Because to charter a club, you need 20 members. Oh. It was very difficult. 
to convince and get those 20 members to come and be part of the White House Masters. Wow. It was a huge task. I know the pains we went through. So we got our 20 charter members and formed this club in April 1996, Dubai chapter, which is the mother of all chapters in Dubai and the Northern Emirates. Now, as you see, it changed the lives of those 20 members because it took a lot of convincing, I must say, to joined the chapter, but they realized that it was adding a lot of value to it. However, I must tell you that there are many people who were charter members who are no longer with Toastmasters. They have moved away. Okay. Mm -hmm. But as you now see, as we can say, the rest is history with the number of chapters that we now have in Dubai and the Northern Emirates, we can definitely say that it has caught on quite well. That is an indeed a huge, huge task, you know, chartering a club and uh, very inspiring story. They say first it is always difficult. So that's how the journey began. And that's how my trust with Toastmasters began. And I really enjoy, enjoyed and am enjoying every moment with Toastmasters. That is very inspiring, DTM Malika. Now, you have been a Toastmaster for 25 years. How has this impacted you, you know, in your personal growth? Okay. It has definitely impacted me in myriads of ways. Uh, firstly, I would say that it had a great impact on our family. Since both Ram and I have been Toastmasters, our two daughters grew up seeing us work the way the Toastmasters work, practice all the speeches, write those speeches, all these things they have seen growing up. The seed was sown. They went on to become Gavaliers, and then later on when they went to universities, they started a Toastmasters club in their own universities. I'm very proud to say that both of them have turned out into very good individuals with immense leadership skills and great communication skills and have been and are being well recognized in their own fields today. This so is a very that beautiful. is from my family's viewpoint, which has impacted, and I cherish that a lot. Now, as a professor myself, I have found it is quite easy to integrate with the students, both with their academics and otherwise. I have learned to give a patient ear to help the students with whatever their issues or whatever their problems be. Summing it up, I could say that I have been an influencer. Thanks to Toastmasters and the rigor and the discipline that I put myself through, that which I had set for myself. I think it has helped me help many people around me. So that's what the growth the person on the personal front has been. That's a you know great insight into what Toastmaster can do in your personal and professional life. And I think everyone should bring in their spouse to Toastmasters. Uh, in, in fact, if you don't mind, I would like to mention something here uh -huh. that this has, you know, I, I'm proud to say that I have been instrumental in forming the first ever only women's Toastmasters club in the entire region. Well, maybe you that's... have one in Jordan. I don't know. But when it started in Jordan, I'm not sure. But definitely Desert Divas is a testimony to that. And we have a fantastic club out there, uh, which started about five or six years ago. I'm not too sure about the year right now. That, that's that's a uh, that's inspiring, and I have met some of the Desert Diva uh, 
uh, Toastmasters. They are wonderful, incredible. They are part of one of our club as well. And moving on, the quote by Kenneth Blanchard, the key to successful leadership today is influence, not authority. What do you make of this quote? Well, I believe using empathy, humanity and understanding when dealing with people is more rewarding than using authority to get things done. My experience with my interaction with thousands of young adults who have crossed my path only leads me to believe that I, if I have been successful, it is only because I have been able to influence them and not by using my position of authority. If they look up to me, that is if my students today look up to me, it is not because of my position of authority, but because how I have impacted their lives, how I have influenced their lives. So that is again, something that I really look up you know, think about as very, you know, successful or a success in my life as a professor. As a fulfilling, it's a great feeling. Very, uh, yeah, very, very fulfilling. It was, it's quite a, quite a great feeling. Indeed. Now, as a leader within Toastmasters, you have contributed to the Toastmasters movement in Dubai and Northern Emirates. What lessons can you share with us from this experience? Well, it has been a long journey, as you know, 25 years, with yes. a lot of experiences. Now, we, the founding members, had to learn it the hard way, mm -hmm. on the job. Since there were no precedent, right? Now, you guys have got something to look back upon, but we did not have any precedent. We followed the handbooks and the rules closely and monitored the progress of the members and the club with a fine tooth comb. Our club and its members were like a family and we were there for each other, helping and growing our potential. Now, there are a few things which I very strongly believe in. Mm -hmm. I believe in the airline rule. When the oxygen masks drop, mm -hmm. first put it on yourself before helping others. I would say that we should use this in Toastmasters as well. Be selfish and possessive about your personal goals as to what you would like to achieve for yourself. Achieve those and then help others around you. Go on to help all the others around you. Lead by example. Similarly, I believe being a better listener makes a better speaker and a better human being. Being a member of Toastmasters gives you the opportunity to hone your listening skills, which automatically trains you to become a better speaker. Being part of Toastmasters makes you part of a small community or a group of people with whom you can start applying these skills, mm -hmm. making yourself a more responsible and considerate human being. And finally, something which is very close to my heart, you learn to make a point without making an enemy. I also I believe, that, sorry, yeah, come again. I take that quote. That's a beautiful <laughs> quote. Make a point without making an enemy. Absolutely. I also believe that nothing is ever achieved without enough practice mm -hmm. or without mastering something. You cannot say that you've been successful in something. Now, being a Toastmaster gives you the opportunity to become a better speaker a better leader and a better communicator. These, of course, cannot be achieved overnight. Lots of practice only makes it perfect. 
never be satisfied with just enough always aim high set the bar a little higher every time and you will notice how surely and steadily you will improve again i would recommend that everyone takes on roles and responsibilities at every meeting and in the executive committees as well these are opportunities to train yourself and the most important of all i would say be your own severest critic it helps in achieving the goal those high goals that you set for yourself so i think these are the points i would like to share with everyone i think this is good enough for a start and if we are able to imbibe these and practice along these lines it will give a great boost to everyone of course this is not everything there is so much more that we can use to improve ourselves and i tell you that we learn a lot from every one of us around every one around us and i have always used that philosophy learn from everyone even from a small child to a very old person everyone has got something to contribute and we have got every you know something to learn from everyone because we are not perfect in all senses so it's very very important that at every step we try to imbibe something and incorporate it in ourselves and make a better person in the bargain thank you thank you dtm malika yeah so those were a lot of life lessons from your experience being one of the first toastmasters to spread the value of toastmasters in dubai school why was it important for you to take this step well i always like to work with young minds it's been a passion for a very long time mm -hmm. and i believe it is better to catch them young and guide them chart their path helping the young ones discover and hone their potential gave me a lot of satisfaction it was so refreshing to work with these young minds to with these young people and i must say that i learned a lot from them as well and that was the reason i decided to do a few more youth leadership programs you know after my first one at some other schools as well now it made me proud and very satisfied on seeing those students showcase their talent on the ninth session as we all know that there are uh, you know eight sessions in the workshop and in the ninth session the students are required to showcase their talent mm -hmm. and that was a very very uh, a lovely experience for me uh, watching those students and my heart really swelled with pride when i saw them up on stage so it was something which was very very uh, as i said for my life journey it was a very satisfying um, thing now to me what matters most mm -hmm. is summed up beautifully in mary oliver's uh, poem the summer day what she says there is tell me what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life i have this line scrolled in my diary long ago it's my mantra it's my compass my dream is to work with young minds influence them to discover their potential and do the right thing and what would give me the most satisfaction is when i know that i have lived my every dream or at least tried my hardest to do it that's a blessing to be able to live every single dream of yours dtm malika truly blessed and i've been with toastmaster for 25 years that's a very long journey and people can't even stay married for that long these days 
and you would have had a lot of beautiful and you know amazing moments in this journey could you please share few of those memories with us oh sure i have got plenty of instances which i would have loved to share and because 25 years has been a long journey and in those initial years that is the late 90s and in the 2000s i've really been very 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 active in toastmasters you know uh, trying to be uh, do youth leadership programs in schools doing these um, you know training programs in the various uh, corporations and uh, you know just about everything trying to take on every opportunity uh, participating and uh, handling the gtac or the dtacs you know before the dtacs we used to have something called as the gulf toast masters annual conventions yeah so i have had a lot many instances in my journey in toastmasters that have been defining moments uh, that are seared in my memory now this particular instance which i want to first talk about happened some 23 years ago when i was just a rookie in toastmasters it's 23 or 24 years ago i can't uh, i think it was 24 years ago mm-hmm. i was invited by a corporation to address their 250 plus frontline and sales staff mm-hmm. from all over the middle east right from turkey to uh, oman yeah. all this region you know people representatives had flown in okay. i was just a novice and i had finished only three projects in my basic manual when i was invited to address this audience i had no degree or experience uh, in sales or in dealing with customers now what was i going to speak to this audience i must say the person who invited me had more faith in me than myself well <laughs> it's very important was... have, it's very important to have a person who has more faith in you <laughs> absolutely so i am i am one who you know not to throw up an opportunity where i could put my skills to test and so i accepted it mm-hmm. no doubt i was a nervous wreck facing the lobby at the le meridian hotel near the airport rehearsing the lines that i needed to speak the moment when the door opened and they ushered me in i wished the earth would open up and swallow me well i had to do it so i went up on stage and saw the sea of humanity in front of me my knees turned to jelly there were butterflies in my stomach everything that is there in your toastmasters manual happened with me however you know i am a person if i give my word i will definitely execute it mm-hmm. so however having taken on this task i decided that i have to do it i need to execute it to the best of my ability so i decided to put my best foot forward i spoke and that too for 20 or 25 minutes and the response and kudos that i received from the audience that afternoon is something that i still cherish it kept my adrenaline adrenaline high for a few weeks after that and it was an exhilarating experience that one and that led me to take on as many opportunities that i was offered with more confidence you know i there was this opportunity where i uh, uh, we were at a toastmasters event uh, daniel rex from toastmasters international had come over and there was a huge audience out there and one of the questions that he asked was how many of you have been toastmasters for 5 years and there were a huge number of people who stood up yes his next question was 
How many of you have been Toastmasters for 10 years or more? All the others can sit down. Mm -hmm. So there were quite a few who sat down. We were still standing. Then the next was, how many were, you know, our Toastmasters for 15 years or more? So again, some more people sat down. And then the next was, how many of you are Toastmasters for more than 20 years? Now, there were just a very few handful people standing in the audience. And we were invited on stage. Uh, Daniel Rex honored us with some uh, coins from Toastmasters International. Again, it was a proud moment, uh, you know, to, and I found it hard to realize that, okay, I've been a Toastmaster for over 20 years, my God. So, you know, without my realization, time has just flown and I've been with Toastmasters since 1995 and I'm proud to be a part of it. Um, so I must say that that has been an incredible memory. Again, I have a picture of that event as well, which I can share with you. So I can send it to you. Yeah. Okay. 25 years as a Toastmaster. When you look back now from this, from 2021 to 1995, what's the one thing you have to say? Well, I would say join Toastmasters. <laughs> it definitely has its own benefits. And I'm telling you that I have... I'm, I have evolved as a person tremendously, tremendously. And uh, I think that is something that is worth getting into Toastmasters for. So make it a part of life. And for me, I'm telling you Toastmasters, you know, just because I have achieved DTM, um, it doesn't mean that I have learned everything. For me, learning is always a continuous work in process. Yes. And I learn from anything and everything, from situations around me, from people around me, but from what I read, from what I observe, from what I hear, I learn from everything. And whatever I like, I like to imbibe that. I like to incorporate that in myself. And I think Toastmasters has opened uh, you know, has broadened my horizons, I must say. So it has opened up my mind, it has broadened my horizons. And I will say that it is so good. You know, learning can never be wrong for anyone. It is the best thing. It is the best for everyone. So I would say, please join Toastmasters. It definitely has got tons and tons of benefits. Yeah, which you, don't, you, you don't even realize how it grows up on you. You don't even realize how it transforms you. Yeah, it's like that, uh, you know, simple interest, but it's not simple. It's compounding. Year it is year. like compound interest. Yes, it keeps on adding value to you. And I think if you are that determined person who wants to better yourself as an individual, I think it's a great way to do it. Yeah. And, and I feel that everyone should have, uh, you know, some kind of uh, hobby, some kind of passion. I'm not saying that speaking can be a passion for with everyone, but mm -hmm. at least it can be a hobby. And without even trying it out, I don't think we can even say that whether it is something that you would like, you would want to do. And I'm, I'm telling you, I would like to retract one statement here. It is not just speaking in Toastmasters. I have learned a lot. It is how I communicate effectively, how I you know, put forth my point uh, such that you know, everyone can understand. It has made me a more understanding and, and compassionate human being. And it has got, it has just broadened my horizons. So I use these skills, what I have got from Toastmasters from in, you know, every facet of my life, every facet, be it with 
uh, uh, my friendships, be it with my professional colleagues or my relationship with my students or even in my day-to-day -day life with, you know, whomever you come across at home or outside, it definitely adds a lot of value. So I would, I would surely encourage Toastmasters is contagious. Get onto this wagon and then you will understand what it is all about. So I, I agree with you completely on that. Yeah. And it's not something you can put it in, uh, you know, pack it in half an hour interview. The, uh, the amount of learning you get cannot be packed in half true. an hour. True, and true. What has been your greatest inspiration? Uh, who inspired you the most? Or the mentoring part of Toastmasters? What do you have well, to say? As I said, I, I would say that many people have impacted me. Is there anyone you would like to? Uh, not really. I, I don't think I can say, I can pinpoint that any one person. Because mm -hmm. I look for things in every person. And what I admire in that person, I like to have that in me as well. So there are many people who have impacted my life. And I would say there are many mentors in my life. And I like to follow what they are doing. But again, I need to admire, respect them for what they are doing or how they are. And if I like it, it becomes very close to my heart. And I like to imbibe that uh, in myself. Anything so you remember any one person there could be plenty of it any person or any one incident something very close to your heart how it impacted me you mean yeah In Toastmasters? okay if I say uh, you know uh, you must have heard of uh, Mark Brown uh, who came and uh, yeah so Mark Brown has come to Toastmasters even many years ago. He has come and uh, spoken, has done the uh, keynote address. He's a wonderful uh, speaker. And I think I really, uh, really admired the way he spoke and the way he connected with the audience. And that's one thing which I think I dream of doing someday. I think you're already doing that. <laughs> Oh, and again, talking about that, I think I have a picture with uh, DT, uh, sorry, uh, Toastmasters, DTM, uh, Mark Brown. And that's something which is close to my heart. Again, this is way, way long time ago, maybe almost 18, 20 years ago, I guess. It's kind of a love story with Toastmasters. <laughs> Absolutely. Another incident which comes to my mind is, uh, you know, one of the DTACs a few years ago was held in... Uh, Dubai, and uh, I was the chief judge for the, uh, I think, the table topic contest. Normally, when we have any kind of contest, we expect that everybody puts their phone on silent and, you know, all the devices are kept on because the participants in the table topics are kept in another room and only we bring in one by one uh, to the main auditorium. And this incident happened, which is again quite uh, well seared in my mind. The first speaker had come and spoken, mm -hmm. had gone and sat in his place in the audience. We had brought in the second speaker. When we heard an audio clip from somewhere in the audience, and that was actually the table topic which was uh, which had been given to the first person which was being you know uh, they had put on the audio and it it was heard quite clearly in the section where i was standing and the second participant was also nearby uh, who was being sort of um, the mic was put on the second person to go on stage so we had to make a split second decision because it was unfair to the uh, other participants that the second participant may have heard the first, you know, the topic beforehand. So 
yeah we were ready for it uh, i went to the uh, first person who in the audience who had spoken and told the person that something like this has happened and would that person mind doing or participating the second time because i'm going to change the topic mm-hmm. and so, that person was game no doubt and we announced i announced that the topic has been changed because of some gaff we requested everybody to put every device on silent we wouldn't want appreciate any repeat of such a thing i changed the topic and then we called the first person to come and speak again on the new topic and then the second one you know we had escorted the second person back to the holding room then we brought them again so that i felt i could do it with finesse without getting flustered and which i felt was you know is only because i have developed over the years so the the calm way in which i handled the whole thing and i think there were about uh, if i'm not mistaken a little over 1000 members in the audience that day and without getting flustered without uh, you know even uh, without letting so many people in the audience know that there was something happening out here that was handled so i feel that yes i have matured into a very very you know com- calm and composed person and i must thank those masters for that yeah, doing that requires a lot of patience and being in the present and being rational under any circumstances being able to take rational decisions yeah. that's think, true we discussed about your toast master journey yeah and how you have inspired how you inspired and you were inspired in this 25 years if you have to say in your own words who is Mal- dtm malika before and after joining toastmasters what do you have to say well as i said i've never been shy of the stage i loved oratory i loved acting performing you know right from school i have been into all kinds of uh, all kinds of form of art or uh, elocution debates and the like but i must say i experienced the most amazing transformation that toastmasters brought into me and my life when i got a standing ovation from an audience of more than 500 professionals wow professionals uh, from a from the chartered accountants i addressed i had an opportunity to address them Mm-hmm. now that was really really heartwarming and i was stunned by the overwhelming response so that was a great determine you know defining moment in my life and i felt i owe it all to toastmasters otherwise i don't think i could have pulled it off now in this journey i imbibe i have imbibed a lot from toastmasters from the structured manuals that toastmasters international provides us as well as from the evaluations and encouragements of fellow toastmasters and i would say that i have become a more caring daughter a more understanding parent a more mature spouse and a better friend and wow. above all i now continually strive to validate and bring out the best in myself and the people around me that's beautifully put that's beautifully put dtm malika so this toastmaster is not just about come being a communicator or a leader it's much more than that and that's what was my main or the biggest take away from this interview and thank you very much dtm malika it was a wonderful conversation district 105 is very grateful to you for taking the time and sharing with uh, sharing with us your journey the insights and experiences you have shared with us today will guide all of us in our journeys both as a toastmaster 
and as a human being. Thank you once again and wishing you many more years of happiness and success in all your endeavors. I would like to add one more line yes. to all of us out here. Toastmastering is contagious. Be a carrier. That is what I would like to close <laughs> Thank with. You. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much for having me here. And I would be happy to uh, answer any other questions that you may have. Otherwise, all the very best. And, uh, you know, for District 105, my very best and hope that I'm able to help in, as any, in any way that I can in the growth of District 105, as well as the Toastmasters movement out here in UAE, as well as the region. Thank you so much.